welcome guys to the last part of the lecture in this video we will uh, try to design a complete retaining wall if you remember in the previous video we just uh, did some uh, checks uh, uh, for the safety of the wall and uh, in this video we will be designing a complete retaining wall so it says that design a cantilever retaining wall to support a bank of earth now keep in mind this thing that the height of the bank of earth it means that the difference between the earth level uh, uh, at the backfill side and uh, on the working side will be 16.5 feet the top of the earth is to be level with a surcharge of 330 psf so there is a surcharge uh, uh, also uh, with the 330 psf the given data is that the weight of the backfill is 110 pcf which is pounds per cubic feet the angle of internal friction is 35 degree the coefficient of friction between concrete and soil is 0.5 and between soil layers is 0.7 allowable bearing capacity of soil is 4 ksf the material properties are 3 and 60 for concrete and steel respectively uh, now uh, starting with the solution first step is that we have to select the dimensions because if you uh, see the uh, given data there are no dimensions given only the required height of the backfill is given and the surcharge is mentioned okay so uh, determine the dimensions of the retaining wall using the approximate relationships shown in figure one this is figure one for this uh, uh, example and here you can see that uh, there are different requirements for example the uh, width or thickness of the stem at the top is 8 to 12 inches minimum uh, the thickness of the stem at bottom is x and this x is also uh, 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 width of or the depth of this uh, uh, slab or you call it the base uh, also uh, the, uh, the value of x you can determine it from this formula which is h by 12 to h by 10 also the minimum thickness of the base is 12 inches uh, it says that on the passive side uh, this uh, uh, be, uh, bottom of this base uh, of the slab uh, it should be at least at a distance of y uh, to prevent the frost penetration and it says that it should be 3 to 4 feet below the frost line and it should be greater than or equal to 2 feet so the minimum is 2 feet uh, and you can go to up to 4 feet uh, 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 down uh, from this level okay and uh, the difference between this line and this line it is mentioned and that is 16.5 feet right so this is your 16.5 feet the uh, angle of this batter this is one fourth of inch for for a single feet so let's continue uh, with this uh, solution uh, in the dimensions first we will determine the height of the wall so as i mentioned that we will allow some distance y uh, so it says it's allowing three feet for frost penetration to the bottom of the footing in front of the wall since this is the front of the wall right and this is back of the wall that's why we call this material as a backfill so the height of the wall becomes the 16.5 was mentioned and we are assuming 3 feet for frost penetration so 16.5 plus 3 is 19.5 feet so total height h this h is equal to this 16.5 plus this 3 so that's 19.5 okay now the base thickness assume base thickness is 0 0.08 of h and if you recall this factor h by 12 which comes out to be 0 0.08 okay so when you multiply it with the h the value is 1.56 or 1.5 feet so the height of the stem is 19.5 minus this 1.5 it comes out to be 18 feet why we have uh, deducted this because if you uh, uh, subtract this x from this h so you will get the height of this stem which is from here to here okay uh, next is the base length we are done with the height of the wall we are done with the base thickness and now we are uh, working for the base length and this is the base length okay which is two fifth of h to two third of the h so 
the base length varies between 2 fifths which is 0.4 edge and 2 third which is 0 0.67 edge. So we are assuming an average value of both of them which is 0 0.53 of edge. So the base length equals 0 0.53 into 19.5 comes out to be 10.3 feet and let us we take it as a 10.5 feet so 10 and a half feet 10 feet 6 inches is the total length of this base. The projection of the base in front of this stem varies between 0.17 h and 0.125 h. Okay, so the projection from this point to this point is uh, can be determined from here, which is h by 8 to h by 6. So this is our h by 8, and this is our h by 6. So assume a projection of 0.17 h, which uh, comes out to be 3.3 feet. Uh, uh, so we take it as a 3.5 feet. Okay, so. Uh, the total width of the base is 10.5 feet and length or width of this uh, side is 3.5 feet and this the, uh, these are our final uh, dimensions uh, apart from stem thickness which we will uh, uh, calculate it now. The thickness of the stem uh, at the base is uh, of course we know that 1 feet and 6 inches because it is equal to the x if you recall uh, from this diagram right. So we know the thickness at the base, uh, we have not determined at the top. The maximum thickness is at the bottom of the wall and we already know that okay and we have selected it as 1.5 feet. Select a practical minimum thickness of the stem at the top and at the top we assume it as a 1 feet okay. Now the thickness at the top is 1 feet and the thickness at the bottom is 1 feet and 6 inches. So there is a difference of 6 inches. Now we will determine that whether this uh, 6 inches is enough uh, uh, for this batter or this slope on the outer side or not. So the minimum batter of the face of the wall is 1 fourth of an inch per feet. So total length of the arm is 18 feet. So just multiply it with 1 by 4. So that is 4.5 inches and we have 6 inches. So it's okay we are on the safe side which is less than this 0.5 feet right 4.5 inches less than 6 inches. So our trial dimensions are okay. So these are the trial dimensions where the top of this stem is 1 feet bottom of this stem is 1 and a half feet. The thickness of this base is 1 and a half feet. The thickness remaining uh, uh, soil at this uh, outside uh, is uh, one and a half feet because we if you remember we we have taken this side uh, this depth as a three feet so when you uh, when you uh, subtract this one and a half feet you are left with one and a half feet okay the total uh, length of the base is 10 feet and six inches the thickness of stem is uh, one feet and six inches and the thickness uh, length of this side is three feet and six inches. So it is uh, the uh, it uh, when you sum it up it is uh, about five feet and the rest on the uh, active side will be five feet and six inches. You can also call this side as a toe and this side as a heel. Okay, the clear height is sixteen feet six inches as it, is, as it was mentioned and uh, height of this stem is eighteen feet. Now we are left with this uh, surcharge which is 330 PSF. So we will deal uh, with it in the next step. Now the second step after uh, determining the uh, dimensions uh, we will use the Rankine equation to determine the uh, coefficients. Uh, we can determine the coefficient of active and passive but we are uh, ignoring the passive earth pressure and only uh, working out with the active earth pressure. So CA is uh, this one and when we put the values of phi it is 0 0.271. The third step is the factor of safety against overturning. So first we are dealing with the overturning. For the overturning first we have to calculate the actual unfactored forces acting on the retaining wall. So first find those acting to overturn the wall. Uh, these are the destabilizing forces and if you uh, uh, f uh, see this figure you can see that this uh, HA1 and this HA2. Basically the HA1 is uh, due to this uh, uh, surcharge and HA2 is due to this backfill. So these two forces, these two horizontal forces HA1 and HA2, these two horizontal forces are trying to destabilize this uh, wall uh, against uh, overturning uh, uh, about this point O. Okay, it want to overturn the wall about this point O. So what we have to do, we have to determine the uh, 
value or amount or quantity of these forces and their distance okay so hs is basically the height of this surcharge and uh, the height of surcharge is ws which is given uh, which is 330 divided by unit weight of the soil which is 110 so we got the height of surcharge as 3 feet so here we got the height of surcharge as 3 feet and we know the height of the backfill the height of the backfill is 19.5 feet so the p1 p1 is uh, due to this uh, uh, surcharge and uh, formula is ca uh, unit weight into hs we know the value of ca 0.271 Uh, we know the unit weight and hs we just determined as a 3 so the p1 is 90 psf and p2 which is due to this backfill and p2 is equal to the same formula but uh, instead of hs we will use h which is 19.5 and the p2 is 581 now we have to determine the pressure that it is exerting so uh, for the case of uh, this surcharge it is uh, exerting this uh, rectangular pressure if you can see this rectangle this small rectangle right so this rectangle the area of the rectangle is uh, 90 which is this p1 c this p1 is the base of this rectangle and height of the rectangle is 19.5 so 90 into 19.5 gives you ha1 right similarly ha2 is this triangle if you can see that because with the increasing the depth the soil pressure is increasing and it is maximum at the base which is p2 we just determined p2 so half into perpendicular into base so half into perpendicular into base gives you ha2 similarly since ha1 uh, is uh, the pressure of uh, uh, this uh, rectangle so its lever arm will be at the middle which is 19.5 divided by 2 and uh, this is a triangle so this uh, lever arm is one third of the uh, total height so it is 19.5 divided by 3 so now we got ha1 into its arm and ha2 into its arm so destabilizing moment or the, the overturning moment is we just multiply them so 1.75 kip into 9.75 plus 5.66 multiply by 6.5 so the total destabilizing moment is 53.93 kip feet now we have to calculate the balancing moment and balancing moment is provided due to the weight all the weights for example the weight of the stem which is divided into this rectangle and this triangle the weight of this base and the weight of this soil which is uh, acting at the uh, active side or acting on this uh, uh, heel side of the base right so uh, in this case uh, if you can see that w1 is the weight of actually this rectangle the width of the rectangle is 1 and length of the rectangle is about 18 so 1 into 18 and unit weight of concrete is 150 so it gives you 2.7 kips right similarly w2 is a triangle with the same dimension 18 into half and uh, multiply by unit weight w3 is also a rectangle uh, with 1.5 feet into 10.5 feet so 10.5 into 1.5 into 150 and w4 is the weight of the soil so uh, the rectangle with 5.5 because the remaining is 5.5 c and 21 is the uh, total height and 110 is the unit weight so here uh, we got the uh, forces or the weight of all the elements now their uh, lever arm about this point o so the the distance from here to here is 3 feet and 6 inches and uh, we add this extra 0.5 so that's 4 feet right and the uh, the w1 is acting at the middle so uh, we will add another half feet so 4.5 feet is the arm of w1 the same is case with the w2 with the w3 and w4 okay so when we multiply the uh, the forces with their arms we get this uh, moment which is restoring moment and when we add it up so it's about 125 right calculate the base soil pressure take moments about the toe and o as i mentioned that this toe and o we will calculate about this point uh, to determine the location of resultant r of the vertical forces so when we are done with point 3 because this uh, restoring moment is much much greater than this destabilizing or overturning moment now we are concerned with the Uh, pressure of the soil 
so uh, we have to determine that the resultant r which if you remember from the previous uh, video that it should act into the middle third of the uh, slab right this base slab or the footing so we have to determine this x which is equal to summation of m which is balancing moment minus summation of h into y which is overturning moment divided by r so when we put in, uh, when we put the values it comes out to be 3.89 feet which is greater than 3.5 uh, so the eccentricity is uh, the 10.5 which is total length of the base uh, divided by 2 minus this 3.89 so the eccentricity between the middle of the footing and the resultant is 1.36 feet the resultant r acts within the middle third it confirms okay of the base with an eccentricity of 1.36 feet with respect to center of the base so for a one feet length of the footing if we consider a unit uh, uh, fit along the length uh, in the perpendicular to the screen so uh, multiplying this 10.5 with 1 will be equal to the area will be equal to 10.5 square feet so moment of inertia will be uh, since we have taken 1 feet in the perpendicular direction so bh cube divided by 12 which turns out to be 96.47 feet power 4 now we have to determine q1 and q2 uh, these are q1 and q2 right and uh, to determine them uh, there are uh, two things one is uh, the normal uh, stresses normal stresses and other are uh, second one is the flexural stresses so as you can see that the normal stress is r by a you know the value of r 18.44 you know the value of a 10.5 right plus r into e r is 18.44 you just determine the value of e 1.36 into c which is the middle of the uh, footing which is 5.25 divided by i we just determine the value of i so when you add them up it will give you the value of q1 and when you subtract this value from this value uh, you will get the value of q2 so you got the value of maximum and minimum pressure at the footing uh, both are less than 4 ksf so soil pressure is adequate now uh, we are done with the uh, overturning and uh, soil pressure and uh, now we will calculate the factor of safety against sliding a minimum factor of safety of 1.5 must be maintained so force causing sliding as we know that h1 and h2 these two forces are causing sliding right and the resisting force is acting at the base here right so resisting force is equal to mu into r and uh, we got the value of mu which is 0 0.5 and r is 18.5 so when you divide this 9.22 divided by 7.543 you got a factor of safety 1.25 which is less than 1.5 so it is not okay right now what you have to do is the resistance provided does not give an adequate safety against sliding in this case a key should be provided so if you check this diagram there is no key right no key is mentioned here but here we are suggesting that a key should be provided and the phase is now changed from a b c d e f to this a c see this is a now there is a new phase a c why we are uh, saying that this point is a because when this h a and h uh, h a 1 and h a 2 will push this uh, a wall uh, it will take this portion the key will take this portion of soil with it right and it will act as a uh, as a part of this key so there will be friction between uh, uh, soil uh, layers or uh, this soil layer and this soil layer right so we will use this friction value so it says that uh, another function of the key is to provide sufficient development length for the dowels of the stem we will see at the end that when we provide the reinforcement uh, into the stem so this reinforcement from the stem will continue into this key okay the key is therefore placed such that its face is about six inch from the back face of the stem we will discuss it in detail uh, or you can see that this uh, point should be at six inch from this back of the uh, stem 
in the calculation of the passive pressure the top foot of the earth at the toe side is usually neglected leaving a height of 2 feet in this example so we are neglecting this uh, uh, 2 feet of uh, passive earth pressure assume a key depth of t is equal to 1.5 feet and a width of b is equal to 1.5 feet so here we are assuming a key of 1.5 by 1.5 feet right whose thickness and whose width is 1.5 feet now uh, the calculating the passive earth pressure uh, generated because of the key the formula is this we calculated cp and with this cp we calculated the hp hp is equal to half of the cp into unit weight into h dash plus t and if you remember here we have taken this h dash as 2 feet plus t which is 1.5 feet right so uh, the total if you see the depth of the key is 1.5 feet and the thickness of this is 1.5 feet this base right and at the top it was 1.5 feet but we have ignored this 1 feet see neglect 1 feet of earth and we have taken only half feet just to, uh, to be on the safe side therefore the total uh, hp is 2486 pounds the sliding may occur now on the surface ac cd and ef as i explained earlier that now this sliding will happen here from a to c c to d and d to e right so this is a new uh, uh, failure uh, zone the sliding surface ac lies within the soil layers with a coefficient of internal friction uh, 0.7 whereas cd and ef are between soil and concrete so their uh, coefficient will be 0.5 when we uh, calculate resistance in this case so f is equal to mu1 into r1 plus mu2 into r2 r1 is the reaction of ac and reaction of ac we can easily calculate from here c the reaction of ac from a to c this point right this is a triangle or if you uh, uh, convert it into a triangle so it's a rectangle with the depth of 0.39 feet and this triangle and from similar triangles you can find this uh, uh, this point okay and this point also so Uh, reaction of ac is 11.44 kips uh, similarly r2 is equal to r minus r1 and it comes out to be 7 kips so now we know we know r1 and r2 so f is equal to 0.7 into r1 plus 0.5 into r2 which comes out to be 11.5 kip the total resisting force is this f plus this hp because here we are considering this passive earth pressure as well so f plus hp comes out to be 13.99 now the factor of safety against sliding is 13.99 divided by 7.43 is equal to 1.9 which is greater than 1.5 even it says that if you ignore this uh, passive earth pressure and you only consider this f uh, uh, the uh, resisting pressure which is now uh, increased because of the addition of the key still the factor of safety is increased to 1.55 which is greater than 1.5 and you can uh, easily provide a key uh, uh, which will give you factor of safety sufficient against the sliding now we are done with the uh, safety checks and uh, we will uh, focus on the design of the wall or the stem Uh, first one the main reinforcement the lateral forces applied to the wall are calculated using a, a load factor of 1.6 okay keep in mind the critical section for bending moment is at the bottom of the wall the height of the wall you already know is 18 feet so the calculate the applied maximum forces p1 is equal to 1.6 into ca w into hs we already calculated it now multiply it with 1.6 it turns out to be 143 we also calculated uh, this p2 which is 1.6 ca into uh, w into h and now here the h is 18 so uh, value of p2 is 858 pounds uh, again uh, calculating h a on the basis of this uh, revised p1 and p2 so the h a1 is 2.57 kips and uh, the lower arm 18 divided by 2 please uh, keep in mind that here we are taking length of the arm 
and not the total depth because in a previous uh, case here we were considering the entire retaining wall right uh, because we were discussing this uh, about this base of this footing now we are just discussing about the this stem or the wall so we are uh, deducting this one and a half feet and it turns out to be 18 feet so therefore ha1 is 2.57 and ha2 is 7.72 kips and uh, the arms are again on the basis of 18 feet and not 19.5 feet right so mu at the bottom of the wall this is not against point o this is at the bottom of the wall is about 69.45 kip fit and we have to design for this moment the total depth used is 18 inch we already know that that the total depth here is 1 fit and 6 inches which is 18 inches right now b is equal to 12 inches which is the uh, width at the top and d is equal to 18 minus 2 which is concrete cover minus 0.5 which is half of the bar diameter so the effective depth is 15.5 now we have this formula for ru is equal to mu divided by bd square we have put it the values uh, i already explained that why this is 12000 because the units are kept fit so when you uh, transfer from fit to inches uh, you have multiply with 12 and when you convert kip to pounds you have to multiply with the thousand so you have to multiply it with 12,000 to convert to pound inches and b is in inches and d is in inches so uh, the value is ru is equal to 289 psi now the steel ratio rho can be obtained from this formula where rho is equal to 0.85 fc prime divided by fy fc prime is given fy is also given we have determined ru and fc prime is again given so just put the values and we will get the value of uh, rho which is 0 0.007 when we multiply for the area of steel this rho with the b and d so it turns out to be 1.3 square inches okay use number 8 bars spaced at 7 inches which gives us 1.35 square inches square is not properly uh, placed in this uh, at this point which is greater than this 1.3 square inches the minimum vertical area of steel according to ACI 11.6 is 0 0.0015 which is 0.32 square inches and uh, yes minimum is less than provided area of steel so okay we are good now because the moment decreases along the height of the wall why uh, let me show you see this triangular distribution here the moment uh, demand is maximum at the uh, base and minimum at the top so it is decreasing as we are going upward okay so area of steel may be reduced according to the moment requirements it is practical to use one area of steel or spacing for the lower half and a second area of steel or spacing for the upper half of the wall so we divide the wall vertically into two portions the lower half and the upper half and we provide different uh, 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 spacings of the steel to calculate the moment at the mid height of the wall 9 feet from the top so now we are uh, calculating uh, up to this point right so one will be the rectangle and the other will be triangle you can also calculate from this diagram uh, by similar triangles okay so p1 is equal to again 1.6 that factor we just discussed c into ca into unit weight into height which is 3 because the surcharge remains the same only the height of the backfill changes from 18 to 9 so here the total load is uh, given uh, calculate h a1 which is 1.29 and arm also reduces from 18 to 9 also the area of triangle and uh, the lever arm so in this case moment mu is 11.5 kip feet as compared to this 69.45 kip feet so you can see that the moment has changed exponentially so the total depth at mid height of the wall is uh, the total uh, depth at the top is 12 and at the bottom is 18 so at the middle it will be 15 
So here the effective depth will be equal to 12.5 inches. Now using the same formulas, uh, we got RU, we got uh, rho and we got area of steel of 0.25 but since uh, uh, we have to determine the AS minimum and putting the value of AS minimum which is 0.27 inches which is greater than 0.25. So we have to ignore this 0.25 and we will take this 0.27 into consideration. Use number 4 vertical bars spaced at 8 inches gives us area of steel of 0.29 with similar spacing. You can see that here use number 8 bar spaced at 7 inches and uh, here use number 4 bar spaced at 8 inches with similar spacing to the lower vertical steel bars in the wall. So. Uh, we are done with the uh, main reinforcement. Now we have to determine the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement. The minimum horizontal reinforcement at the base of the wall according to ACI 11.6 is this is AS minimum for the horizontal reinforcement which is 0.432 square inches assuming number 5 bars or smaller. So uh, we have uh, when we put the values it gives us for the bottom third 0.36 right. For the upper two third, it gives us 0.22 square inches. Use number 4 horizontal bar spaced at 8 inches at both the internal and external surfaces of the wall. Use number 4 vertical bar spaced at 12 inch at the front face of the wall to support the horizontal temperature and shrinkage reinforcement. Now dowels for the wall vertical bars. Uh, the anchorage length of number 8 bars into the footing must be at least 22 inches. So use an embedment length of 2 feet into the footing and the key below the stem as we uh, already uh, determined the values at the depth and width of the key. Design for shear. The critical section for shear is at a distance D of 15.5 from the bottom of the stem uh, or from the face of the support. At this section the distance from the top equals the total length of the wall is 18. So at a distance uh, uh, D the length will be 16.7 feet. So it is uh, just like a cantilever uh, beam where uh, its uh, length is uh, 16.7 and uh, load is acting on it. So P1 is equal to 1.6 into CA into unit weight into depth of surcharge and P2 is this depth of backfill. So the load uh, uh, from the load we will calculate HA which is 0 0.143 into 16.7 we have divided this by 1000 uh, for uh, kips and uh, 0 0.796 the triangular distribution which is 6.6 .6 kips right. So total H the total horizontal uh, load or the uh, push or the shear force is 2.39 plus 6.6 .6 is equal to 9 kips. Now we have to design for this 9 kips, right? Calculating the uh, shear capacity of concrete which is equal to phi into 2 lambda under root fc prime into bd since this is a normal weight concrete so lambda will be 1. Uh, phi is in case of shear is 0.75. Uh, we have divided it uh, by 1000 because the values in the under root are put in uh, psi. Uh, B is 12 and D is 15.5 and uh, it turns out to be 15.28 which is greater than the demand. So it is good. Now uh, next is design of the heel. A load factor of 1.2 is used to calculate the factored bending moment and shearing force due to the backfill and concrete whereas a load factor of 1.6 is used for the surcharge. The upward soil pressure is neglected because it will reduce the effect of the backfill and concrete on the heel. Referring to figure 3, the total load on the heel is, now just go to the figure 3, this is figure 3 ok and you can see the upward forces acting on the heel and the toe. So Vu is equal to 1.2 into 18 into 5.5 into 110 plus 1.5 into 5.5 into 150 plus 1.6 as it says that a load factor of 1.6 will be used for the surcharge into 5.5 into 3 which is depth of the surcharge into 100 divided by 1000 so Vu is 17.5 kips and Mu will be equal to multiplying this Vu uh, into 5.5 which is length of this uh, 
heel side right let me show you this heel side so its length is 5.5 feet right now the critical section for shear is usually at a distance d from the face of the wall when the reaction in introduces compression into the end region of the member in this case the critical section will be considered at the face of the wall because tension and not compression develops in the concrete so vu is equal to 17.2 kips 5vc when we put values in this formula comes out to be 14.3 kips which is not enough it is less than vu where 5vc is less than vu and the section must be increased by the ratio 17.5 by 14.3 uh, either you have to increase the depth of the footing or shear reinforcement must be provided required depth is the ratio of uh, vu divided by 5vc into the uh, actual depth uh, so the new depth will be 17.4 inches total thickness requirement will be 17.4 plus 3.5 is 20.9 inches so use a base thickness of 22 inches and depth is equal to 18.5 inches ru will be equal to 140 and rho will be equal to 0.0027 so area of steel will be 0.6 square inches and shrinkage reinforcement will be equal to 0.475 and minimum flux general area of steel will be 0.73 now as you can see that the area of steel is less than minimum reinforcement so this will go on use number 6 for spaced at 7 inches so area of steel will be 0.76 inches which confirms the uh, re requirement of minimum steel so the development length for the number 6 top bars equals 1.4 into ld which is equal to 35 inches therefore the bars must be extended 3 feet into the toe of the base so the bars in heel will be extended into the toe the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement in the longitudinal direction is not needed in the heel or toe but it may be preferably preferable to use minimal amount of reinforcement in that direction so use four number number four bars at 12 inches now coming to design of toe we are done with the design of stem or wall we are done with the design of heel and now we are working for the toe here we will calculate vu in the same manner 1.6 into uh, the Uh, mean of 3.13 and 2.62 right if you remember this diagram here uh, 3.13 or if you see figure 4 3 right so 3.13 and this 2.62 right so 3.13 and 2.62 you have taken the mean of it into 1.96 minus 1.2 into 22 by 12 into 0.15 because uh, at the toe side you have to deduct this so the vu is 8.37 kips this is less than 5 vc which is 14.3 kip calculated for the heel in previous step right so mu is equal to uh, 1.6 into this again this thing and it comes out to be 25.7 kip feet so ru when calculated is 75 psi and rho is 0.0017 so area of steel on the basis of this rho is 0.377 square inches and 0.377 inches square inches is less than this minimum reinforcement so we have to provide this reinforcement also in the transverse direction the shrinkage reinforcement is 0.475 so use number 6 bar spaced at 7 inch similar to heel reinforcement the development length of number 6 bar equals 25 inches so extend the uh, toe bars into the heel just like you have extended the heel bars into the toe right these are the heel bars and these are the toe bars and since r is acting in this way so it will cause a uh, tension at the bottom in the toe and tension at the top in the heel right the final reinforcement details are shown in figure 5 so this is the final uh, detail of reinforcement in the arm this is your 
design reinforcement number 4 at 8 inches in the upper half and number 8 at 7 inches in the lower half right so uh, shear keys which we provided this shear key right this is the shear key shear key way between wall and footing in the construction of retaining walls the footing is cast first and then the wall is cast on the top of the footing at a later date a construction joint is used at the base of the wall the joint surface takes the form of a keyway or is left in a very rough condition the joint must be capable of transmitting the uh, stem shear into the footing uh, proper drainage of the backfill is essential in this design because the earth pressure used is for drained backfill so weep holes should be provided in the wall 4 inch in diameter and spaced at 5 feet center to center in the horizontal and vertical direction so in vertical direction weep holes are provided at 5 feet and also in the horizontal direction the perpendicular direction okay now uh, what it says uh, uh, the construction joint so let me take you uh, we will see this uh, key in uh, further detail you can see that this is the thing that they are talking about that when you cast this footing so you have to leave this thing rough or uh, you have to uh, leave it as, as, as a key so that when you cast the concreting of this uh, wall it makes a good bond with this uh, footing also you have to continue the dowels of, from the stem into this key right the dimensions of this key should be 2 inch by 4 inch uh, in this direction and 2 inch by 6 inch in uh, other direction okay so that was the complete design of retaining wall thank you very much i hope you will have uh, learned a lot of things and uh, if you have any question kindly uh, mention it in the comment section box see you with the next video thank you very much